Hey folks, Youssef here with Impact Soundworks, and today I'm going to walk you through the entire process of setting up and playing pedal steel. This video starts right from the beginning, with the checkout process, and ends with us opening up the instrument itself and learning how to play it. Okay, so you've added your product, in this case pedal steel, to your cart, and you're checking out. Once all of your details are filled in and you're ready to place your order, you'll see this box on the right side of the screen. It says it'll create a Pulse Downloader account for you and provide you with the sign-in information in your order email. Sounds convenient. But what is Pulse Downloader? Well, in a nutshell, it's a desktop application that lets you download, manage, and update all of your products from Impact Soundworks, as well as dozens of other virtual instrument developers. So at this point, we'll assume you don't have a Pulse account yet. So I'm going to click on that box. If you didn't click on this on checkout, that's all right. We'll get to that in a minute. Once you click Place Order, you arrive at this post-checkout page. If you scroll to the bottom of the screen, you'll see your product code, which you're going to need to download and activate the instrument. If you scroll up, you'll see the link to download the Pulse app. Click that. By the way, all of the required links will be included in the description below. At this point, it's like downloading any application. Click on the download link that corresponds with your operating system. I'm using macOS, so I'm going for that one. If you check your email now, you'll have a receipt email from Impact Soundworks, which contains your product code and another link to the Pulse Downloader. And if you ever lose that email, go to impactsoundworks.com, click on the profile icon, sign in, and click My Products. And you'll see your orders and codes here as well. Simply click View Order for any of the products you've purchased. Okay, let's now install Pulse Downloader. Navigate to where your browser downloads new files, and you'll find the new .dmg file, or for Windows, the .exe file. Click on this, and then follow the instructions as per your OS. Again, this process is just like installing any other app. Once the process is complete, head on over to where the application is and open it. Next, we need to sign in. At the beginning of the video, I talked about clicking that Pulse Downloader box on checkout. Well, if you did click that box, then your Pulse account has already been created. In which case, just go to the email you were sent, and your sign-in info should be located right here, under the title Pulse Credentials. Just copy and paste your sign-in info into Pulse to get started. Now, if you didn't click that box at checkout, or you can't find your login information, we're going to head back into Pulse Downloader and click on Register. Once you've done that, you'll arrive at your Pulse library. And your library is probably empty. But we're about to remedy this. At the top right of the screen, you'll see the Add a Product button, which is no doubt going to become the most exciting part about opening up Pulse. If you click on it, you'll see it asks you to enter a redemption or serial key. Now, this is where you input your product code, which again, can be found in the email or in your Impact Soundworks account. So all you need to do now is copy and paste it into Pulse. Once the code is validated, Pulse will ask you where you want the product to download. Where you store your libraries is completely up to you. But here's a few things to keep in mind. Using an internal hard drive as opposed to an external USB drive will usually provide better performance. For those of you who intend to perform live, we recommend this option, especially if your computer has a solid state drive. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to download it to my computer's internal hard drive. Once we do that, you'll see it's downloading. Once the download is complete, you'll see Pulse now offers you the option to open Pedal Steel. But if you click on that, you'll find it takes you to Pedal Steel's folder you just downloaded, not the playable instrument itself. Pedal Steel, like many virtual instruments, is designed for a specific sampler plugin called Contact. So Contact is the actual plugin you'll load in your DAW, and Pedal Steel will load inside that. Now, the full version of Contact, which offers additional editing features, costs money, but you'll still get 100% of Pedal Steel's features if you use the free version of Contact called Contact Player. That said, Always confirm before purchasing a sample library if it requires the full version of Contact or not. Pedal Steel doesn't, but a large percentage of our products do. And we always state this on every product page. 
So if you don't already have it, let's download the free contact player. To do this, we'll need to get Native Access, the program that Native Instruments uses to manage all of their products. Head on over to your browser and search Native Access, or grab the link from the video's description. And from here, the process is identical to downloading Pulse, so let's fast forward the process. Once you open Native Access, use your Native Instruments account info to log in. If you don't have an account with Native Instruments, click Create a Native ID account. Once you're in, navigate to the Not Installed tab on the left, and you'll see Contact 6 Player is right there. Click Install. Next up, to get Pedal Steel to appear within the contact library, we need to register the product code with Native Access, which is the same exact code used in Pulse. So once again, grab the product code, and then inside Native Access, go to the top left corner and click on Add a Serial. Input the code to register Pedal Steel in your Native Instruments account. Last but not least, you'll go to the Not Installed tab, find Pedal Steel, and click Add Library, and then navigate to the folder you selected in Pulse. This completes the installation and activation of Pedal Steel. If this seems like a lot of steps, keep in mind you don't have to repeat the installation of Pulse, Native Access, or Contact Player again. Next time you get any Pulse or Native Access compatible products, all you need to do is the serial activation step. I'm using my main computer now, which has the full version of Contact. It might look a little different, but this won't affect our tutorial at all. Currently, we're using Contact in standalone mode. This means we're not using it as a plugin inside a digital audio workstation, or DAW, like Cubase, Logic, or Pro Tools. If you want to record and write MIDI, you'll want to use Contact as a plugin. But if you're performing live, the standalone app works just fine. To check our setup, let's click on the Contact tab at the very top and navigate to Preferences. Click on the Audio tab. The two most important things to adjust here are latency and device. Device should be set to your computer if you want the audio to come out of your computer's speakers. If you're using an audio interface, however, set it to that. For the latency slider, the lower you go, the less delay there will be between you playing and the sound coming from your speakers, but the more of your computer's processing power is used. 128 tends to be the happy balance for most producers with modern computers, but the lower you can go without audible glitches, the better. Next, head on over to the MIDI tab just below. Make sure your MIDI controller is plugged in. Once you see it appear, if it says off to the right of its name, click on that and change it to port A. Now your MIDI controller should work. So let's finally open up Pedal Steel now. If you click on the folder structure, you'll see there's two versions. Click on the bottom one titled pedalsteel.nki. Allow it to load. Once the UI appears, it will need to do additional loading as shown by the loading bar up top. For those looking to use Pedal Steel for live performance, keep in mind how long this takes to load and plan accordingly. Load times will depend almost entirely on the computer you're using. The speed of hard drives, the generation of RAM, the connection type your external hard drive uses, all of these are factors. However, it should typically take less than 30 seconds. Now that the plugin is loaded, give it a play. The keys highlighted in blue are your playable range. But before we get into how Pedal Steel works, let's talk about how to use Contact as a plugin. If you already use a DAW, you probably already know how to add plugins, but just in case, here's a quick montage showing the process in a few different DAWs. Now that we got the instrument up and running, let's get to actually using it. The first thing you need to know about Pedal Steel is that it's actually quite easy to play. We give our customers a lot of customization over playing style, timbre, and other options, but today we're just going to focus on what's essential. For a deeper look, check out our other tutorials linked below. You'll see we have three voicing modes. You can change the mode in real time by just tapping the key associated with it, so feel free to jump between them live. In ascending order, we have polylegato mode, legato mode, and harmonized mono mode. You can also change the mode by turning this knob here, labeled voice mode. Polyphonic mode is the most basic. In this mode, pedal steel reacts sort of like a piano. Each key triggers a note, 
I mean, you can play multiple notes at the same time, but there's no legato. Still, you might find this useful if you want each note to have a pronounced attack, or if you're just writing out a temp track and want to suss out the details later. Polylegato mode reacts almost identically to poly mode, but with the addition of those characteristic legato slides. By default, you get a whole tone legato slide between notes. To trigger them, play a note, and while it's down, play another. Or, if you're using a sustain pedal, you don't need to hold down the notes. You can also slide intervals and chords. And of course, you don't need to trigger legato if you don't want to. Just attach your notes so that they don't overlap. The last mode, harmonized mono mode, is especially cool. Firstly, it does away with the slide limit, so now you can slide from any note in the playable range. The price you pay for such limitless legato is only being able to play one pitch at a time. But fear not. Playing intervals and chords is actually more intuitive in this mode than you might think. One of the problems with using a keyboard to play the lap steel is that the voicings you normally do on a piano might not be particularly idiomatic on a lap steel, especially considering its specific tunings and intervallic relationships. But this mode gives us 11 harmony keys, the ones here in yellow. You'll notice they only appear when you're using this mode. If we hold them down, you'll see each of the harmony keys provides us with different harmonies on top or below of what we play. And they even slide when we do. To match the harmonies with the key of the song, use the light red tonic keys here. Use these to set the major scale key you're playing in, and the harmonies will adjust accordingly. For those of you who want to further explore the harmonization tab, located here, to get a better understanding of what the harmony keys are doing and how you can customize them yourself, please see our dedicated harmonization tutorial linked below. To finish off, let's quickly run over a few last things. The two red keys here, just above the blue playable range keys, select and deselect harmonics. To the left of the keyboard, we also have pitch bend and vibrato. If your MIDI keyboard has these controllers, they should automatically be synced up with contact. You can adjust the instrument's volume by using this slider up here. Oh, and by the way, for those of you who want to know how to get the contact keyboard to show up, just click on this little window icon up top. Lastly, this instrument's tone can be adjusted using presets. If you look towards the top of contact, you'll see there's this little camera icon. If you click on it, you'll find a drop-down menu here. And here's all the presets. There's a lot of variety to choose from, and they're a really great way of getting started. And that's it. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. I know it can feel like a lot of ground to cover at first, but having gone through these steps now, you're much more poised to have an easier go at it the next time you purchase one of our products. If you've missed any of the links, please check the description below. For any questions concerning contact or native access, uh, do check out the loads of articles that Native Instruments have created on those products. Um, there's also more than a decade's worth of content here on YouTube concerning those products. And of course, for more walkthroughs and tutorials concerning our own products, we've got loads here on YouTube. For everything else Impact Soundworks, check out our website, impactsoundworks.com. Once again, my name is Youssef, and I'll see you next time. Peace.